Hello again and welcome to another hybrid activity in CST8216 processor architecture. This time around we're going to be calculating voltage, resistance, current, and power in simple parallel circuits. So let's get started, shall we? Here's a simple parallel circuit. Here we have three lamps connected in parallel to a battery. You can tell they're in parallel because the top of each of the lamps is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, while the bottom of each of the lamps are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. You'll also notice that each of the top of the lamps are connected to themselves, and the same holds true for the bottom of the lamps as well. And most of the electric lights and appliances in your home are connected in parallel, so that if you blow a fuse in one plug in, say for example, the living room, then it's likely that the other plugs in the living room will not work either until you replace the fuse. So let's make a small circuit with a couple of parallel resistors in it. On the left hand side we have a battery as the voltage source, followed by two resistors in parallel, R1 and R2, and on the right hand side that depicts a meter, some sort of multimeter, measuring the voltage across the two resistors. And that meter is going to read whatever the value of the source voltage Vs is. And that's because the parallel resistors have exactly the same potential difference across them because of the way parallel circuits are connected. In a previous lecture we talked about Kirchhoff's voltage law and we found out that the voltage drops around a closed circuit are equal to the voltage source. Well here this is the parallel circuit that we're referring to. So in a parallel circuit the algebraic sum of the currents entering and leaving a node is equal to zero. So in this diagram here we have the current leaving the voltage source and going to the three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, which are, are all connected together at a common place. And this common place is called a node. So here IT will equal to the algebraic sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3 because the current entering a node equals the amount of current leaving the node. Another way of putting that is that IT minus I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. Let's look at another characteristic of parallel circuits, and that's the current paths. And we can see here in this diagram that IT enters node A and splits up into I1 and I2. Now what's interesting here is at the bottom at node B, then I1 and I2 will be algebraically summed and we will get the same value of IT as we started with. Another interesting thing here is that each current path in a parallel circuit is referred to as a branch. So I1 is actually the branch current through R1 and I2 is actually the branch current through R2. So we know now that IT is equal to the algebraic sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3. And when we do these calculations, then a quick check to see if we have the right value is that the total current IT has to be greater than any one branch current. So that's a good check to use each and every time you do any calculations. Let's take a look at how to calculate branch current now. So we have on the left hand side a voltage source and we have current flowing into the node. Now to calculate each of the branch currents you can depict the voltage source sitting at the top of each of the resistors. So that voltage is there. So to calculate the current then all you do is take that the value of the voltage source and divide it by the value of the resistor. And that will give you the branch current in amps. 
So let's calculate some currents in a simple parallel circuit. For your convenience, I've included the formula to do so. And up and the upper right hand side, I have the powers of 10, their prefixes, and the symbols used um, to indicate those prefixes. So let's calculate IR1 at this time. So we find that IR1 is equal to 9 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm, which is equal to 9 milliamps. Didn't have to use a calculator here because 9 divided by 1 is simply 9. And the kil ohms, the, the K is equal to 10 to the third. So I take that up from the denominator to the numerator and I get 10 to the power of minus 3, which is equal to a milli. So I get 9 milliamps. The same thing holds true for IR2. I have 9 divided by 1.5, which is equal to 6. I take the K, which is 10 to the third. I bring it up to the numerator, it's 10 to the power of minus 3, so I end up with 6 milliamps. And for R3, I divide 9 divided by 3, which is equal to 3. Do the same thing with the, the K, the 10 to the third in the denominator. And finally, I end up with IT is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, which is equal to 18 milliamps. So the total current flowing out of the battery to the left hand side or the top of R1 and R2 and R3 is equal to 18 milliamps and then that current splits so that 9 milliamps goes through R1, 6 milliamps goes through R2 and we have 3 milliamps going through R3. At the bottom of those resistors all the currents combine again and we have 18 milliamps flowing back into the battery. Here's a very helpful hint. Whenever you calculate the total resistance of a parallel circuit, just remember that RT will always be lower than the lowest value in the parallel circuit. In other words, if I calculate RT of these three resistors here, it has to be lower than 6 ohms. In fact, as we will calculate very shortly, it will be 3 ohms, which is definitely lower than any of the values here. Let's look at the concept of calculating the total resistance for a parallel circuit. You'll notice here on the left that we have a voltage source and we have a total current flowing into the node called A. That current is broken down into I1, I2, and IN, where IN signifies the last current flowing through the last resistor. In other words, we could have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, how many R's we want. We just indicate this by the dash line in Rn. So to calculate the total resistance in a circuit such as this, then we use a formula Rt is equal to 1 divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over Rn. And we just include all the resistors that are in the parallel circuit. So here's a simple circuit of three parallel resistors. Note that there is no power supply shown. That's because the very first thing we must always do is disconnect the power supply so that if we hook up some sort of measuring device that measures resistance, we don't burn it out. So, to calculate the values, we use the formula as shown. And as you can see in the calculator hint, what we should end up with is 3 ohms. So I would encourage you to try this example now. Did you get 3 ohms? If not, try it again. So 
So here's the equivalent circuit, three ohms. So now if you wanted to find out the total current flowing in the circuit, you would add in the power supply again and use I is equal to Vs or Vt, they're both the same, divided by Rt. And then you would find out the total current flowing in the circuit. That total current would flow into the left-hand side of R1 and then be distributed amongst the three resistors. At the bottom of the three resistors, then that current would be summed again, flowing back into power supply. Here's an example, and it's a funny looking one, where we have three resistors connected at the top at a single node, and then connected again at the bottom. But they don't look like they're in parallel because it looks like it's a triangle. But because the top node is connected to the top of all the resistors and the bottom node is connected to the bottom of all the resistors, it's a single node. You can actually stretch out the left and the right hand side resistors so that they're all in parallel with R2. And that might be a little bit more familiar with what you're used to. But the point in this example is that if you look at all the resistors, they're the same value. So although we could use that RT is equal to 1 divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, because the three resistor values are equal, then we can say that RT is equal to R divided by N where N, in this case, is equal to three resistors that have equal values. So in this case, we have 18 kilo-ohms divided by three, which is equal to six kilo-ohms. And what I would do is I would invite you to check this with the previous formula, where we said RT is equal to one divided by one over RN plus one divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3. Now in the very beginning I said 1 divided by Rn and that should have been really 1 divided by R1. Here's another example of a four resistors of equal value and they're all in parallel. Now you say to yourself, well why didn't they all connect them to the top horizontal line and the bottom horizontal line? Well different authors of textbooks or different engineers will draw circuits differently. So what we have to do is recognize in this particular case that all these resistors are in parallel with each other. And you can tell that because the top of all the resistors are interconnected with each other and the bottom of all the resistors are interconnected with each other. And in this case is a real bonus because all the resistors are of equal value. So in this case, because all the resistors are of equal value, then RT is equal to R divided by N, where N is equal to 4, and a single resistor value is equal to 200 ohms. So RT is equal to 200 ohms divided by 4, which is equal to 50 ohms. Here's a case where we have two resistors in parallel. And instead of using the formula of RT is equal to 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2, we can simplify that formula by saying that RT is equal to the product of two values divided by the sum given by the formula shown. And this is often referred to as the product over the sum formula. And this is really handy because even if we have three resistors or four or five resistors in parallel, if we didn't want to use the previous formula that we saw, we could take two of these resistors at a time, calculate their total resistance, and then just keep on 
calculating the total resistance of the parallel circuit as we go along. Let's take a look at an example where we have a couple resistors in parallel and see how this formula works. Here's an example question that I'd like you to work out on your own. 